Ugh, is this really how you want to visit the Vatican Museum in St. Peter's Basilica? Lost in a mob of 20,000 tourists and having a miserable time? Oh. Look, in this video, I'll share a variety of useful suggestions to help you avoid mistakes, beat crowds like this, and make your experience at the Vatican Museum in St. Peter's unforgettable. The single best tip I can give you for visiting Vatican City is to book a tour. The most obvious advantage of a tour is that the guide will explain a lot of what you're seeing to you, which is extremely helpful. That said, a tour of the Vatican offers several more terrific advantages, and I'll touch on those as we go through this video. As is the case with most tourist destinations in Italy, the Museum and St. Peter's Basilica have unusual schedules. Even worse, the two locations don't even have the same schedules. Remember that the Basilica holds various masses and other events that could keep you from being able to enter. For example, the papal audience is held at St. Peter's every Wednesday, and that draws in tens of thousands of people. And Sundays are obviously devoted to masses. For tourists who are not interested in attending the papal audience or a mass, that normally leaves the other five days of the week to visit. But check the Vatican's website to see if any special events are planned. In some cases, the Vatican schedules state events in St. Peter's with little or no advanced warning. And so, this is another advantage of booking a tour. They know as much as possible when you will or will not be able to go to the museum or the basilica. As far as the time of day, the earlier you start, the better. This is another advantage of using a tour. General admission to the museum starts at 9 or 10 o'clock, depending on the time of year. You can enter the Vatican Museum as much as 90 minutes earlier, maybe even more, with guided tours. Remember, there are about 20,000 people visiting the museum each day. Getting there early puts you ahead of the vast majority of tourists. Later in the morning, the museum is packed with people to the point where it's difficult to do much of anything other than simply flow with the crowd. Look at the number of tourists in this picture. Later in the day, you can expect three or four times as many people, or more, in this location. I can't emphasize this enough. Beating the crowds is a huge advantage. Look for a tour company with earlier preferred entrances and get in as early as possible. The earlier you start, the better your experience. Skip the line tickets don't necessarily mean early. Look for the entry time of 8 a.m. or before. So, in a nutshell, when should you go? Monday and Tuesday or Thursday through Saturday but check with the Vatican website to make sure the day is not booked for something else. Find a tour with an entrance time as early as possible. If you can find one before 8 a.m., that's a great option. The art and history at the Vatican Museum and St. Peter's Cathedral are truly spectacular. If you want to see a video tour, I have published a separate video that showcases memorable scenes from Vatican City. You'll find a link to that video in the upper right corner now. Let's talk about how you get to the museum. If you use a tour to visit the museum, you must be there by the scheduled start time or earlier. Arrive late and they'll start the tour without you. You won't be allowed to catch up with the tour because the tour guide most likely has your tickets so you can't get in. That means you don't get to go. Now with that in mind, now let's talk about how to get to the museum. There is a train station close to the entrance and there are buses in the area, but I would recommend against using those. In Rome, a public transit schedule is more of a suggestion than an actual schedule. You can't rely on a train or bus to get you to the museum on time, especially if you're trying to arrive early in the morning. Your best bet is to take a taxi. Use the Freenow app to order a taxi and leave a lot of extra time for the taxi to arrive and transport you to the Vatican. Personally, 
If my tour started at 8, I would plan my taxi ride to get me there by 7.30. Parents, I know you want your kids to experience the Vatican, but I encourage you to reconsider taking young children to the museum. It's a very long walk. Restrooms are not plentiful, as I'll talk about in a minute. There are lots and lots of people there. You must go up and down stairs. Taking children to St. Peter's Basilica is not so much of a problem, but you really need to ask yourself if your youngsters will honestly enjoy the museum compared to the inconvenience experienced by them, yourselves, and frankly, the other people in the museum. Next tip. Large bags, backpacks, luggage, and tripods cannot be brought into the Vatican museums. You will have to check those items in at the entrance. At the end of the tour, you'll then have to walk about a mile back to the entrance to get your stuff. Your best bet is to leave those items at home. I wouldn't suggest bringing in food or drinks either. Now, large backpack, well, that's a subjective term. How big is a large backpack as opposed to a medium-sized backpack? You should keep what you're carrying as small as possible. Now, in truth, the Vatican was not as strict as the Borghese Gallery or Capitoline Museum in this regard. Monique carried the small case that you see on screen now, and she had no problem. I carried my camera gear without a bag. Remember that you are in Vatican City, a religious state. Entrance requires clothing that is appropriate to a religious site in Italy. Knees and shoulders must be covered for both men and women. Likewise, if you're wearing a hat, take it off before going into the museum or basilica, or someone will definitely confront you about it. This is the spiritual home to 1.2 billion people. Be respectful. Once you get inside the entrance, be sure to use the bathrooms before starting the tour. You are constantly on the move during the tour, and the group can't wait for someone to go to the bathroom along the way. Once you reach St. Peter's, you are probably not touring as a group anymore. I assume there are public bathrooms in St. Peter's, but I can't confirm that. And what I'm about to say may sound tacky, but I'm just being straight with you. If you're concerned about lack of access to bathrooms, you may want to wear absorbent undergarments like Depends to avoid emergencies. As far as mobility, you will be walking constantly on the tour with occasional stairs. The tour lasts probably a couple of hours. I have bad knees, but I wore good walking shoes and I had no problem walking the tour. Most tour companies do not offer tours to those who require wheelchairs or scooters, because the typical tour routes go up and down stairs. The Vatican's website has a page of information about using wheelchairs and scooters and states that much of the museum can be accessed using those devices, but not with most guided tours. This next one is just my opinion, but I want to warn you in advance. Imagine packing your family into a high school basketball court in a mob of 800 strangers. Every 15 seconds or so, people yell at you to be silent. No contradiction there, right? Be respectful, another absurdity, and don't take any photos. As more people pour into the court, you are shuffled from one end to the other as you try to look at the ceiling without getting knocked over and trampled by the crowd. <laughs> Sounds great, huh? This is the Sistine Chapel. I'm sorry to be a downer, but it is what it is. It's something you must see if you're going to the Vatican, but I want to set realistic expectations for you. The chapel itself is glorious, but they make it an awful experience, and don't even think about taking photos there. Fortunately, the rest of the museum is wonderful. You see so many pieces of art and historical artifacts. Every room is decorated differently, and if you're in a guided tour and get in early, Crowd sizes are manageable, so you can actually enjoy yourself. It's a fascinating tour. Being on a guided tour is a big benefit if you want to leave the museum and go to St. Peter's Basilica afterwards. If you're on a guided tour, when you reach the end of the museum, you can move through a special exit to access St. Peter's. If you're not part of a guided tour, you must return to the museum entrance to leave and then walk about a mile to get to St. Peter's. Either way, once you reach St. Peter's, you are probably not part of a guided tour anymore, 
so you can water it to your heart's content. St. Peter's is pretty easy to navigate. This is the largest church in the world, so even with lots of people there, you can still walk around freely and enjoy the amazing building. The only crowd I dealt with in the church was at the Madonna della Pieta. It's protected by a clear barrier, but you can still get photos of it once you work your way through the crowd. If you want to climb to the top of St. Peter's, choose a tour that takes you there. Not all tours include a trip to the top. Likewise, if you want to enter the necropolis, take a tour that specifically includes this and book it as far in advance as possible. These can be tough tickets to get. I hope this video helps you plan your visit to the Vatican Museum in St. Peter's Basilica. On screen you'll find a link to our playlist of Italy videos, including the photo essay of Vatican Museum in St. Peter's Basilica. Subscribe to our channel and you'll be notified when we publish again. And please, your likes and comments help our channel immensely.